Hello from Romania. This is your pastor, missionary, bishop. Roy Olson speaking to you from the facilities of Apavia, Romania. I'd like to speak to you on the subject that your life has great value. There are some questions only human beings ask. Number one is, where do I come from? Origins. Question number two is, where am I going? Destiny. The third question is what we'd like to address today is, why am I here? Significance. When God placed you and me on earth, and every person alive, he placed us with, with a destiny. He put within us, each one of us, something that this world needs. <clears throat> Even the sun, moon, and stars, everything that God made has a purpose, has an assignment. Uh, whether it be the, the stars, the moon, the cosmos, uh, the, the Lord has said, you know, let the lights in the firmament of heaven divide the day from the night. They have significance, I mean, perhaps not just that, but that. And it says, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And dear friend, your life has purpose. Your life has significance. Your life has something that this world needs. People are, are crying, they're, they're dying. They're lonely, they're hurting, they're starving. And this world needs people who will give the one life that they have to make a difference. This world tends to control through pain, through reward and punishment. Even horses, we, we train them through pain, the spurs, the uh, bridle in the mouth, and our culture wants to do something of the same to, to you and to me, to us. And they, they tell you things like, just fit in. Uh, who do you think you are? Just fit in and be like the rest of us. And then they tell you all the reasons why you're just like them and you do not have anything different so just behave and fit in and it's a it's a toxic environment and even the, those who love us our teachers our parents our friends and even the traditions all tend to put you in the box and squeeze you so that uh, your distinctiveness does not come through. Even your bosses, uh, go do this, go do that, uh, whatever you're told, just do it. But uh, life is more than just being born, going to school, getting a job, raising a family, pay the bills, and then die. No, your life, my life, is more than just that. It's that, but it's more than that. Now God's way is a little different. God's way is a way of freedom. He definitely in his word says, be not conformed to this world. Don't let them press you into their idea of who you should be and how you should behave and so on. No, but there's a transformation from this world into what God would have you to be and it takes place in the mind by the renewing of the mind. It starts in the mind, your, your self-image, who are you? Your view of God, who is he? And if you can trust the Holy Spirit's power to make you what God has called you to be. 
And scripture says that every one of us has been given a gift. One this way, one that way. The gifts are as varied as the colors of the rainbow. But within you, God placed within your very DNA something like a seed. Something that could develop and grow into something. Jeremiah, the Lord said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. He was called, he was destined before even his birth. The Apostle Paul, uh, concerning him, the Lord says, uh, go your way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, even after all that he did. God had a plan and a destiny for him. Your past does not predict your future. Your faith, your trust in God does that. Now Moses was called, he had a destiny, he had a purpose, his life had significance, but when he shared it with others, they didn't understand. And if they didn't understand him, they just may not understand you. So the suggestion is, be careful who you tell everything to, because they may not understand. And so Paul, the apostle, he was speaking to this young man, Timothy, and uh, I understand he was somewhat retiring, uh, Timothy was, and so Paul encouraged him, uh, stir up the gift of God within you. We live in Romania and we have this wonderful dish called chorba. It's more than a soup, but lighter than a stew. And if you let it sit around for a while, all the goodies settle to the bottom. And so when they, when they serve you some chorba, what they do is they stir up the pot so that that which is on the bottom will will uh, somehow homogenize into everything like that. So the Lord, through the Apostle Paul, is uh, encouraging him and therefore us, stir up the gift of God that's within you. When I present this to a congregation, I encourage them to, with a strong voice, all repeat, that's me. And, and it is, applies to every one of us. God has dealt to every person a, a gift and a measure of faith. You know, some people say, well, I have this handicap, I have another handicap. Dear friends, every one of us has some sort of handicap. Do it anyway. Uh, some are very athletic, some are handicapped, some are able to sing, some are able to cook, but everybody has something. And we all have obstacles. And so if we can just kind of identify the obstacles that may be in our pathway, maybe geographic or relational uh, habits that we have. Apostle Paul talks about uh, those things that so easily beset us, um, perhaps uh, lack of resources or training or even support, emotional and financial support and even sometimes motivation and uh, the loss or the obscuring of a vision. And even some people, you know, who, who are, have negative influence over you, they tend to rain on your parade and come across as being very negative, some of them you have to leave them behind to find God's purpose in your life. You can't let another person, whoever they may be, as close as they may be to you, you can't allow them to prevent you from doing God's will and purpose in your life. So you must strive to being uh, all that God has put within you. Uh, nobody's going to believe God and strive for it. You have to do whatever it takes to, to fight, to resist, to focus, to study, to labor, 
to train, to pay the price, go through the preparation for what God has for us. Uh, one song can change a moment. One idea can change the world. A prayer can change the impossible. Because you have the potential and you have the capacity does not mean that it will lead to the experience of being all that God has called you to be. Sometimes you may feel alone, uh, in the dark. I, I use the caterpillar as an example. The caterpillar going into the cocoon, alone, dark, tight pressure, doesn't know what's going on, but knows that something is happening. And it can happen to us as well. <clears throat> right now, my uh, remote is not functioning, so I'm going to just move things along manually. Okay, hopefully that will do it. And other detours that we can experience, discouragement, it doesn't always happen on the first try. Try to witness to somebody, and you may have to go through a, a, a couple uh, tries to effectively share the gospel. The opinions of other people, loss of vision. Of course, uh, we mentioned resources. Sometimes the price is costly. And of course, it doesn't happen all at once. We need patience. Can you say that's me? I can. And so you are destined, designed to deliver to this world, to us, the gift that God has put within you. This child is destined, has the potential to become a doctor, but um, it's not his time. There's preparation, there's uh, education, there's training to have the experience of the full potential. And so when you serve your generation with your giftedness, you'll be serving God and something God sees that this world needs. And this world is indeed a needy place. Nobody is just like you, and nobody can do this for you. God can find somebody else, but nobody exactly like you. And the possibility is if you do not, then maybe your unique gift of this world will not be done. So sometimes we, we ask, how can I discern? Well, sometimes we ask the question, what makes you angry? What makes you cry? What touches you? Does this chi a child who has been beaten and has a, a bloodied lip and black and blue marks on her face, does that touch you? Does that move you? Well, what brings you joy? What do you love to do? Those can all be indicators of the gift and the purpose that God has destined for you. <clears throat> Sometimes people are trying to be what they're not. God didn't call them, God didn't prepare them, God, God, God didn't put them in. He put something, but not what they want. And so they confuse. Sometimes they think they're, we call them an 18 wheeler, a huge truck going down, but maybe God has made them a pickup truck. And you know, Maybe some people are a wheelbarrow. But you know, if God has called you to be a wheelbarrow, be the best wheelbarrow you can be. There are certain tasks that cannot be uh, um, ministered to help by a 18 wheeler or even by a pickup truck. For instance, we uh, make um, a concrete here and from the, from the mixer to the job site, often the best thing, this, 
the wheelbarrow. And so don't tell God what you want to be necessarily. Ask the God what he would have you to do and to be. And then accept what God says. Don't discount it because it's not what you want. Accept it and then treasure it. It's God's call over your life. And that's a great, a great thing. Develop that gift. Oh, I went to somebody after they had done a musical presentation in a small church and I complimented them on their vocal and uh, keyboard abilities. And I said, you know, if you, if you get some additional training and so on, you could cut CDs and uh, market uh, the gift that God has given you. And their response was, well, this is the way God gave me this gift. And uh, this is fine for me. In other words, he wasn't open to developing the gift that God had given him. But uh, whether through more experience or through training or schooling or being mentored, somehow we can develop what God has given us and then put it to use. Use the gift that God has given you and focus on what you have, not on what you don't have, I'd like to sing like Pavarotti, but nobody would come because that's not the gift. So find your gift and then retire, or refine it. It's like finding gold in them, their hills. You find the gold, but then the gold has to be refined. And if I may say, suggest, dear saints, dear friends, often people give up during the refining process. It requires heat, it uh, requires um, some other issues that are difficult. The refining fire is difficult. And uh, press through, hang in there, brother. Um, be not weary in well-doing, for in, in due season we will reap if we faint not. And the scripture talks about uh, being refined as pure gold. And uh, people don't come to you uh, because of how you look. They come to you because of your giftedness. This man, uh, Luciani Pavarotti, I mean, uh, he was a large, ponderous man. And uh, people did not come to admire his appearance. But that gift set him apart and drew people. And you have a gift. Develop it. Pavarotti went through years of training. But people came and they were willing to pay money. Here's another man that went through training, Bible school, and then a lot in order to become on the level of a Christian statesman. Give your gift the best. You may not fit in like everybody else, like this. Uh, you don't have to follow the stream and go with everybody else. You may not look like everybody else. <laughs> and this little girl hanging upside down. Oh, can you imagine? Have you met her? We'll all meet one like her in our life. And of course, this is zebra giving you the rear end look. You don't have to be like everybody else. Those what we call three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, everybody else bowed. They stood tall. Stand tall. Dare to be different. Here you see it in the Romanian language as well as um, the English, dare to be different. Wear your own clothes, like your own music. Do what God has put into your heart. And here I have a picture of my artist brother, Peter Olson Art .com. And you know, you just look at him, you know, he's, he's an artist of some sort. And whenever you see me, you'll probably be wearing his red socks. 
That's not a baseball team, that's the color of the socks that he wears. And yes, dear friend, that's you. So what gives you your worth? It's your fruit. It's the gift that God has given you. It's in your very DNA. The schooling didn't give it to you. God gave it to you. Schooling can develop it. Now it's interesting, the Bible talks about a man in Exodus 31 and uh, to a, a man by the name of Bezalel. And God says concerning him, he wasn't a preacher, he wasn't a teacher, but God said, I have filled this man, Bezalel, with the Spirit of God for what purpose? In all manner of workmanship. And he's the man who led the building of the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant and the a tabernacle of the wilderness. Jesus selected fishermen and farmers because he knew that they were more than just that. They did something in order to provide for their livelihood and for their families, but that's not what they were here on earth for. And he knew that these humble fishermen were called to be the leaders of the early church. So what gives you and me our worth is not how we are just like everybody else. It's how you're different. Different call, different way of looking at things. It, it's just different and you can accept that uniqueness. So what matters most is now how others see you. It matters how you see yourself as in this diagram. Do you see yourself as a kitty cat or a lion? What does the Bible say? So when you begin to see your purpose, your significance, it's called vision. You're getting a vision of your life. And when you get vision, it will bring to you focus and direction, clarity, remembrance, and elimination, what you should do and what you shouldn't to do. So the reason for your life is there's a mission, there's a task, there's a job, there's a need in this world. And uh, God has destined you to be part of that. So what is it? It's, it's the will of God, the purposes of God, and your part and my part in the divine plan of applying the gifts that God put within us to accomplish God's will in our lifetime. Yes, that's us. Help, empower, treasure, and protect people. People are why Jesus died. Don't die like you were born. Pour out to this generation the gift God put inside of you. Thank you for listening. And if I were doing this in front of a congregation instead of at the conference center at Acavilla, I would say, can I get a hearty amen? And of course, people will respond. And God bless you and we'll be back. Goodbye. This addendum has to do with our mission here in Romania, that's the nation of Romania. Our northern border is Ukraine, we hung uh, Hungary and Serbia and Bulgaria. This is the cable, the Caleb Tabernacle, where a lot of our worship services and camps take place. And there's another view of the Caleb Tabernacle and we're shining in the night. And here are some of the uh, camps and ministries we have done and working with a group called World Race every year hosting uh, two teams of seven, eight young people of this age. God bless you.